Android sends 20 times more data to Google than iOS sends to Apple. I knew they were creepy. Retweet. Hi everybody and welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt and oh boy, this is this is a juicy headline. This is some fanboy fodder. This is if you don't like Google or you don't like Android and you like Apple specifically for privacy stuff, this is exactly what you've been looking for. This is a perfect headline. It not only proves what you already know to be true, that Apple is better at privacy than Google, but it puts a number on it. Android is 20 times worse than iOS at privacy. Perfect, right? Retweet, share it everywhere. Um, make a whole long Twitter thread about how this shows that Google is terrible at privacy and Apple is a white knight uh, protecting our privacy and isn't doing anything wrong. Except, is that really what it shows? <laughs> um, I'm going to skip to the end of the report here and read you uh, most of the summary of the report. Uh, so just bear with me here. Um, here's what they find. We find that even when minimally configured and the handset is idle, both iOS and Android share data with Apple and Google on average every four and a half minutes. The phone IMEI, hardware serial number, SIM serial number, and IMSI handset, phone number, etc., are shared with Apple and Google. Both iOS and Android transmit telemetry despite the user explicitly opting out of this. iOS sends the MAC addresses of nearby devices, for example, other handsets, and the home gateway to Apple together with their GPS location. Currently, there are few, if any, realistic options for preventing this data sharing. So that's a very different conclusion than what you get from just reading the headline uh, that says Android shares 20 times more data. The conclusion of the report is that both platforms are sharing personally identifiable information with location data to Apple and Google, and they're doing it every four and a half minutes. And in the conclusion, even Apple gets called out a little bit more than Google with some stuff with location data around other devices on your network. So I don't think that the correct takeaway is that Google is 20 times worse at privacy. Yay, Apple is great. I do think Apple is better than Google at privacy. I think that if we look at the, um, the, the general stuff, the general ways these companies operate, then yeah, Apple is more privacy oriented and that makes total sense with their business model. And that's a good thing. I mean, I use an iPhone, I'm using a Mac. I have an iPad that I'm recording into. Uh, I have all of these Apple devices in my home. I've got a HomePod mini back here, right? Like. I am a huge Apple fan. In most rooms I walk into in real life, I'm the biggest Apple fan around. It, it, it just sometimes online on tech Twitter, I feel like I'm one of their harshest critics at moments, which is weird. But yeah, I, I think this is a good lesson because this comes at the end of several months of stories about how Google is absolutely terrible and the worst thing ever. I think back a couple months when uh, there was this article that tested how much RAM Safari and Chrome use and it showed that Safari was like 40, 80, something like an insane amount uh, more efficient at using RAM than Chrome. Chrome was using like 10 gigabytes of RAM and Safari was using like 50 megs. Like the, the numbers were insanely different. And I was like, that can't be possible. They're both loading the same website. And so I tested it. And yeah, it wasn't that Safari was so much better. It, was, it wasn't like 4% uh, of the RAM usage that Chrome was. It was much closer than that. Safari was good, but the reason for the massive discrepancy was bad testing. The test wasn't counting all the RAM Safari was actually using, where it was counting everything Chrome was using. So. But that didn't matter because the headline got out and people had their preconceived notions that Safari was not only better than Chrome, but it was so much better than Chrome. And so that got spread like crazy. I think previously, uh, a few months before that, we had this issue with uh, where Chrome was called literally malware and that if you uninstall Chrome, your Mac will instantly be super fast. Uh, and Chrome is the one reason your computer is slowing down. That got spread around a lot and people believe it. I feel like this is the nerd version of uh, closing apps on your iPhone makes your iPhone faster, which is not proven and hasn't been shown to be accurate. And everyone who kind of knows how the iPhone works knows that's not true, but it's a thing in pop culture. It's a thing uh, for a lot of people. They just they just know, even though it's not a real thing, that closing apps on your phone makes your phone faster, makes the battery last longer. Yeah, I think that's the nerd version of uh, this. The delete Chrome and it will suddenly make your Mac super fast. This is really more than an Apple thing, though. It's more than a tech thing. This is just a general reminder to read things before you retweet them, read things before you make a definitive statement on them. And 
if you aren't always willing to do that, <laughs> at least wait like 24 hours and see if there's a follow-up. See if there's some sort of additional information that comes out that either supports or disproves the claim in the salacious headline that you loved and backed up your worldview. Uh, this is just hugely valuable. Um, the best case is you see that the data is perfect, there's no real good uh, counter arguments, and yes, this proves your worldview, everything is great. And so go ahead, retweet it, write your own articles about it, fine, go ahead, absolutely, you should. Uh, that's what we should do with good data. But if the data is bad or if the headline is misleading and isn't really getting across the actual conclusion of what's being uh, researched, then you should know that. You should know that before you retweet it, you should know that before you share it, and you should know that because if, if your worldview is based on bad data, you should know that. We're all going to disagree on certain things despite the data. We can look at the same data and come to different conclusions. I totally get that, but I think it is important for us to and if we're going to be sharing things online, we're going to be sharing things on social media, it's super important for us to be sharing the things that are accurate and are being presented by the articles, by the headlines, by us on social media accurately. So I think that's important and I thought this was a really good example of that where the stuff that I saw online about it didn't match up with what was actually said in the, not only the article, um, but the article was slightly disconnected it seemed from the report itself. And so yeah, I wanted to talk about that today because I think that's super important. I think it's absolutely important that all of us do what we can to make sure that the best information is shared. Um, and that means not jumping to conclusions. It means not retweeting everything that supports your worldview right away. And it means reading the article. Uh, read the article at least, read the research if you can. Um, and yeah, I think that'll help all of us do better online. So that was today's talk to camera episode of A Better Computer. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll link to the article and the report in the show notes so you can see that. And yeah, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.